just had a PR guy to tell me one of these things. <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, you, you, there's a, hopefully a lot of first this year. There's certainly a lot of first for me. Um, but, you know, once again, it just shows our resilience. And I keep using that word, but it's, it's who we are, who we have to be. Um, and every night, somebody else finds a way to step up and make a play for us. Speaking of resilience for uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope to come up with that play after some of the plays that he had leading up to that, what, what did that mean for the team? It was great because then there, there was a brief discussion, you know, um, you know, trying to get the ball in and we, we failed to do so. Um, I was trying to call a timeout, couldn't get it. Uh, we turned the ball over. So there's some frustration there, but the best part about it is they briefly talked about it. We said next play and, you know, he comes out and then makes a play like that is, is huge. Hey, Wes, um, you kind of mentioned it for a second right there about the resilience, you know, on a night where you shot just 36.5%, you still were able to kind of find a way to find points when you need it, find a way to um, win. Uh, I guess, what's that say to you about your team besides just being resilient that you can find different ways to win? But you have to. I mean, you know, once again, we're down bodies. And, you know, it's, it's not funny, but it is funny, the fact that we had lineups out there that we've never scripted with. That's just the nature of it. You know, and we're playing offense, defense late in the in overtime um, and just trying to find matchups that we can go at, target, and it worked. Um, it, it wasn't pretty, believe me, it wasn't. Uh, but, you know, to, to, your, to your point, though, it's uh, you found a way. And it, it's just uh, a credit to our guys. They believe, they trust, and, and they, they leave it on the line. Yeah, he was, he, you know, what? he doesn't get enough credit for his length, his ability to stay in front of smalls, challenge late, defend without fouling. Um, we, you know, we were playing different matchups, like, you know, who was on whom at that point. Um, and we knew Tatum had five. So it was like, we'll put him in it. And then, you know, we like to DB at times, you know, in the screen, because his ability to slip and create space for, for jump shots. You know, and even if he doesn't get the ball, the, the overreaction to his movements and cuts often open up driving lanes. Um, so it, it was a little bit of everything. Um, at times you're searching because we're getting decent looks at times and when they're not going down, no one, next possession, we take a tough one. So just trying to find that balance of what's the best, you know, alternative, who can we go to? And, you know, once again, we, we made plays and we had to. On, on the challenge, who's check, do you have a system in charge of challenges or did you see that right away? No, um, it's it's our video guy, uh, Ryan Lumpkin, and he's <laughs> he's got the he's got the guts to call it and make a read, and it's it's got to be a quick decision. And the fact that he's he's on it has been great for us. He's big two big possessions and in, in key moments for us this season. Another good night uh, defending three pointers. What, what did you see from your guys today? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's good and it's bad. You know, I, I, I bought this up the other night. Was our paint defense? defense has been terrible and they don't necessarily go hand in hand, but it, it's tough to take away everything. So, you know, the fact that we've, we've taken the three point shot out of, you know, the last two games has been great, but I'm not, not quite thrilled with the way we're, we're guarding, you know, keeping guys in front and keeping them out of our paint. So we, we definitely have to do a better job in that regard, but uh, just our urgency to get the shooters is uh, it, it's big because you know, it's a big part of the game, you know, and the teams are not only shooting volume threes, but shooting it with efficiency. You may not remember, but in your first game back in 16 years, um, Patrick Watson threw up two more five free games. To oh, five ruin games. the moment, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a lesson that things can escalate quickly, both in a good way and a sure. bad way. Um, how do you kind of keep these guys motivated to continue this up and, and not kind of let up the play to start? Well, you know, it's we're going to find ourselves on the other side of games like this, where you know you do everything you can and you just don't come away with it. That's that's life in the NBA. Um, but it's, you know, it's who we are. Just stay the course, you know, don't get too high, don't get too low, you know, and don't dwell on the, the losses so much. You learn from them and you move on. Um, you know, we, we want to celebrate our wins and, and learn from them as well, but we're not, uh, we're not in a situation where we're thinking we're world, world beaters. We still have a lot of work to do. Um, and I think that those guys are con convinced that uh, we just got to keep building. Uh, speaking of paint defense, you mentioned it. Is is Gaffer going to travel to you guys to Atlanta, or do you not know that? I yet? still don't know yet. Okay. He's going to uh, do some work tomorrow. We'll see how he responds. Cool. What have you thought about Kyle? Yeah, you know, Kyle's been uh, like that glue guy where we're asking, you know, 
from B3, 4, 5. Um, he's done a tremendous job on the glass, uh, at times bringing the ball up. So it, it, he's been asked to do quite a bit, and he's played heavy minutes. So last two nights, is, uh, it's been remarkable to see him respond the way he has. Uh, so, but it's, it's great for us because we, we need the flexibility. We need his, um, his ability to do a number of things. Um, and his defense has been great. So, you know, you put all that in one, it's, it, it's a really good asset to have. Neil. Coach, what was your assessment about how the ball seemed to stick in, you know, late in the fourth quarter in the overtimes? Were you happy with those possessions or is that something where you guys are going to look at tweaking? No, we, we still have to get better with that. Um, it's one thing to target, you know, a perceived mismatch, put that person in the action, but, you know, when it doesn't work and now all of a sudden you, you got, you know, nine people looking at you. It's, it's tough to play offense that way. Now, you know, obviously we have good offensive players and, and Brad can do it. We've seen Spencer do it, you know, attack those, those situations, get downhill, get to the rim, get fouled. But uh, we don't want to live in those, in those type of possessions because I think it's very difficult and it wears guys down. I mean, it's, it's good defense, you know, when you can get away with it. But uh, we have to find ways to orchestrate those cross matches but then keep the ball moving, find the next action. Um, and, and the ball will eventually find the open guy. And then on that last inbound that you said you were trying to call a timeout, and you probably know the rule better than me, are you not allowed to call a timeout immediately and advance the ball? Oh, I am. I am. I, I was seeing if we could get it up, get it in. Um, then I was trying to call the timeout, and obviously they didn't hear me. Um, and I got to do a better job of managing that. I can't wait till, till the last moment because that's a big play, and that could have cost us. Thanks, Coach. Wayne. Hey, Coach. Uh, Congrats on the win. Walk me through the double overtime. What what did you like from the team regards, you know, mental toughness, um, guys are tired. Just walk me through that double overtime and tell me what did you, you like about it? Well, you know, the um, you know, even in the first overtime, we got down six, and I think it was 320 left, and we found a way to just keep fighting. And I, I just think that's uh it's a it's a hallmark of who we have to be. And you know, obviously in the over, over second overtime. We had to play offense, defense, you know, with Trez uh, fouls out and then he comes in, gets a big play. DB comes in, obviously, you know, his ability to, you know, put pressure on the defense with his movement and cuts opens up some stuff for, for the drivers. So it's a, it, it's a team effort where, you know, not one guy is going to carry us in those situations. And, you know, obviously Brad had a heck of a night, uh, made big plays for us, but uh, I got to applaud all those guys. Everyone who played really uh, competed and, you know, contributed to the win. And lastly, coach, you, you winning these type of games are big. What, what does this do for a team so early in the season to, to carry on? What's well, a character win, you know, but it's also a momentum win where, you know, didn't go exactly how we wanted, but, you know, we found a way. We kept plugging, kept fighting. Um, and we were able to gut out once again another one. And I'm not sure how, but hey, you know, you, you don't want, never apologize for a win. Uh, we can still learn from a lot of things that happen. Um, hopefully not repeat some of those situations, but, you know, it's always good to learn after a win than to suffer through a loss. I feel like we would just, you know, uh, stay within our game plan, you know, uh, kept the pressure, you know, uh, run the guys off the three-point line that, that was running off um, and try to uh, contain as much as possible. You know, that's been our uh, Defensive scheme, you know, uh, and what what Wes has been emphasizing in practice, you know, uh, just get the job done pretty much. Just quickly, what does a game like tonight say about yourselves or what do you guys learn about yourselves tonight when, you know, shots aren't falling like they normally do and, and you guys kind of have to grit out a different type of game? Um, no, we have a lot of uh, resilience within ourselves. You know, uh, we... We never give up, pretty much. You know, even with, though we uh, the second overtime, I think we went down six. I want to say, yeah. You know, we we never got you know frustrated. You know, or you know started like arguing amongst each other. I would I would say, um, and we stay composed. You know, stay within each other, uh, and we we got the job done.
back to it? What are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, it means a lot, you know, uh, just even seeing the fans involved, you know, uh, getting everybody, you know, uh, excited for Wizard basketball again, you know, uh, and for us, as, as far as players, you know, we, we just going out and just doing our job, you know, try to win games, you know, and we, we've been doing that for the uh, first, what's, what's five and one? First six, and we want to continue it. You know, we, uh, like I said, last uh, last game, we, 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 we still getting to know each other, you know, and, it, and, it's, and it's coming fast. You know, we got a game every, every other day. So we, we actually learn on the court and on the go. Uh, I mean, first I wanted to just, you know, before they had the ball in the nine, you know, uh, they was either going, we knew they was either going to Tatum or, uh, or Brown. So we uh, tried to deny them the ball as much as possible. You know, then uh, I think Dennis had the ball for, uh, I want to say, <laughs> the most of the 20, 20 seconds that they had. Uh, uh, so he made it easy for us. You know, as soon as he passed, you know, he had to kind of try to get a quick shot off. Uh, and as a defender, you know, he, once you, he showed me the ball, you know, and I got a hand on it. Uh, luckily, it wasn't a foul. I got all ball. Uh, and no game over. You've been around a while. When you win a bunch of other games, you know, you played well in the spot, but yeah. you haven't played well uh, man, it says a lot about, about us. You know, we know we're going to fight to the end, no matter what uh, what it is. Uh, and like Coach said, you know, no matter how ugly the win is, we got to win. You know, uh, and then we we still learning. You know, we're going to have them turnovers. We're going to have them, them mishap uh, down uh, scratches of the game. Uh, but it's all about just being staying together, you know, uh, and just getting the job done. A lot. I mean, it, it helps a lot. You know, everybody wants to win. You know, winning, you know, when everybody wins, you know, everybody feels good. You know, when it when it's going well, when it, uh, you know, everybody's sharing, sharing the ball, you know, everybody just getting a piece of, of, of the win, you know, you, you want to feel involved, you know, uh, and I think it's helping us a lot. You know, uh, we fight, you know, every day, every game. And we we know what it's going to take for us, you know, to get the win. So we, we come out and that's our mindset every game. Neil. And KCP, after the inbounds play, I guess what was some of the things that your teammates were saying to you, maybe words of encouragement before that final defensive possession? <laughs> that it wasn't my fault. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much what it was. You know, that was just saying, like, you know, you know, that was taking the blame. You no, know, I was taking the blame. Everybody was taking the blame out there. Uh, you know, it's a team effort. You know, it's just not just one man out there. You know, I'm I'm the uh, inbounder. You know, I gotta everybody gotta set screens. Everybody got you know we gotta get uh do our job and get each other open. But I gotta be patient enough. Uh, to get that ball into uh, somebody that's open. And then I'm curious if you're willing to share with us, what, what was Montrez telling you after the game was over? It seemed like he was really excited in your ear. Oh, no. Nah. Uh, before the, the 20 seconds uh, timeout we had, um, no, nah, he was just telling me, you know, go out in there, do your thing, you know, get a stop, pretty much, you know. Um, and that's the same thing he said to me when I, when I came to the bench after I got the stop. He was like, I told you, you know, and he was, you know, it just, just feel good. You know, everybody's is, is involved, you know, and everybody's on the same page. You know, we, we want to win and we want to see each other win. So we're going to continue to do that. Thanks, KCP. Alan. Hey, Coach, this is Alan Silva from Costa Rica for Pesetasket. Well, you have been on championship teams. What do you feel are the aspirations for this team in this season after this five and one start? What's the, you said, what's the what now? What's the aspirations or the ceiling? 
I mean, we just want to take it game by game. You know, it's early still. Um, you know, we still have a lot, uh, you know, a lot to fix. Um, but it's early. You know, we don't, we don't know what our uh, prediction is going to be. You know, the only thing we want to do is come and take it game by game uh, and try to win it. First of all, I'll ask you, this is the best start this franchise has had in 16 years, uh, not since Wes was here in his first year as an assistant. What's your reaction to that? Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it feels amazing, man. Like it's, I tell these guys all the time, you know, they they can be a part of a lot of history over here, you know, just from the way we've been doing things to, you know, the opportunities that we can create and mold our culture into. We always talk about what a culture is and, always emphasizes at the beginning of the year is what we make it. You know, the guy, the 15 guys we have in the locker room, it's what we what we come in and do and hold each other accountable and what we come in and do on the floor, um, you know, together as a unit. So we create that atmosphere. And we're, and we're just having fun, man. We embrace each other on the daily. Uh, and it's amazing to be where we are. But like we always say, we, we have that humble and hungry mentality. Like we haven't scratched the surface yet. We still got a lot to improve and be better at. Got into it with a fan today. Yeah, man, I had to get him to exit the stage left. Oh, to the left, to the See left. You. See you. Everything. Nah, man, it's just I, I understand it's a heated situation. I understand the the you know you cheer for your team stuff like that, man. But leave it there. Leave it just cheering for your team. Because once you start to talk to us and then we retaliate to us, we get fine. Nobody says nothing to the fan. The fan continues to keep coming and you know be able to say whatever he wants freely. No, it's not. It's not the way it's supposed to go. If we're going to be punished on our end for what we say to them, then they need to be punished just as the same as that way. So I didn't even, you know, start getting back and forth, John. I said my piece of what I said for him. Once I see he won't gonna stop, get him out of here, man. Not time for that, bro. Like, go sit behind Boston's bench if you want to do that, bro. Like, we're not about to keep hearing that right behind our bench, bro. It's our home arena, bro. Not Boston's arena. Either of you. What do you learn about yourself from a game like tonight? You know, it would have been real easy to, you know, kind of say, okay, this isn't our night. Shots aren't falling. They rally and both during uh, during the initial run, and then again during the uh, shout out to the point you there for the game in the first overtime. Um, what's to say about you guys that you know kind of just fought out a gritty game? Uh, we're resilient. You know, I've always used that word. You know, we we show a lot of resiliency. Um, and we don't we don't panic, you know. We don't we don't get fl uh, fluttered or whatever the word I'm looking for is. But you know, we we stay calm, poised. You know, it's a game of runs. We're going to go on the run. They're going to make a run. Uh, but we trust our defense. Our defense is what wins us. It's, that's the reason why we were five and one. You know what I'm saying? So we've shot the ball like crap the first six games, and our defense is literally what wins us these games and keeps us. Um, at bay, you know, when, you know, stretch comes down and, you know, we need to lock in, get a stop, everybody's in tune and locked in. So, I mean, that's, that's been us. That's, that's the benefit of our team. You know, that's definitely what we want us to gain tonight. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff we got to clean up offensively, you know, turnovers, better shots, uh, getting guys shot, getting guys more acclimated. But on the defensive end, everybody's locked in. Everybody wants to get a stop. So when you do that, this is, we're going to be tough to beat. Yeah. You, you mentioned the difference in the team in the, in different this year. What is the difference? Why is that something that led you guys to be five and one? Because that's not something that we've discussed since going into the past few years. So why, what's the difference this year? Uh, it's, it's a lot. It's not just one thing. Um, I mean, obviously, our scheme is a little bit different. And I think it's always, ultimately, it's the will. You know, it's, it's all about the players. Like, you can, you can have whatever scheme you want, but if the players aren't engaged and willing to buy into what coach wants, then you're not going to get, you know, you're out of it. So, you know, we do a better job of understanding that this is what coach wants. And if we don't like it, he's very receptive to us giving our opinion and feedback of how we want to go our stuff. And we go from there, you know, so having that kind of understanding and relationship with coach and obviously with the bigs, because they're in a lot of pick and rolls, you know, like I always say, they're the quarterback to the defense, you know, so we want to gauge what they feel. And uh, us as guards, we have to be, we have to make their job easy. So we're all on the string, we're all connected. Uh, it just, it feels good to be in this position. And I think it definitely goes to, you know, back to even when we hit training camp. And, um, you know, Coach gave us a defensive scheme. And, you know, it was times where we kind of, you know, even throughout the preseason, we felt like it wasn't going to work or kind of, you know, really 
be the scheme that really worked for us as a group. You feel me? But it was all about, you know, buying in and doing it a little bit harder. And mm -hmm. I think once we did that in training camp, we see how it resonated over into the game. And we just, you know, hit the ground running since the start of the season. Um, and just trying to keep continuing to carry it over, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you guys just kind of, it looked like you were trying to get four figures of signals to take a lot of action away. And then at the very end, you guys it looked like a one or two pick roll to the strength. I just wanted to shine that spot. Uh, for me, it was just creating different size looks. I know Jalen is a really good defender. Jason's 6'9", 6 6'10". 6 uh, I want to be able to create some advantages for us, whether Al and pick and roll. But granted, Al is a good defender. But out of the guys out there, I know I can get around Al. I know I can use my length and size on shorter. You know, so those were the two situations, you know, kind of driving out his feet, using the length and size and a little bit of advantage on shorter. So those were the two situations. I have to stop turning my back to the defense. That's for sure. Nah, and then I think uh, a lot of times when he got uh, – Got going honestly. It came to the point where, um, you know, it really wasn't about finding the matchup. I think honestly, because they were switching one through five the whole game, you know. And when they started doing that, and then Brad started getting cooking early and started killing the ISO game, then they tried to start, you know, passing the guys off. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why you start seeing the guys that was running up KCP running up slipping out. Um, even the last play when Brad. Uh, I don't know who what DB DB ran to the pick and roll when him slipped out. Mm -hmm. Now DB catches later. it, he's downhill. Now we swing, swing like that was a hell of a play for us, man. So it's just about learning and adapting and, and figuring out what the defense is going to give you. And I think, you know, like Brad said, our offense hasn't been where we wanted it to be, but you know, it, it's we bleeding and it, it's got us wins. You feel me when it came down to it because you know, we can only guard for so many you know possessions, but at the same time, we got to score the ball. Mm -hmm. Man, I ain't going to lie, I did. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I, bought I ain't going to lie. When I shot it, I, I ain't going to lie. I definitely thought I had a chance that we were going to hit the bat boy. It just hit center on. And just, I, I, told, I, told, I told my lady, I told, uh, you know, my people, today was going to be a good, good day, man. Oh, you had your folks there today. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I had the homegrown family yeah. come down, my AU kids. Yeah. Um, got to come to see uh, me at the game, man. It was just a great blessing. I'm actually glad I could do that for them, man. And, you know, it's something that, you know, kids from around my area and from around where we grow up, we don't supposed to see stuff like that, you know. So for them to actually come up and, you know, their family be here and, you know, them actually be able to come and support me to the game, man, it's, it's a big accomplishment. And I, I just owe it all to my manager, man, Terrence Taylor. He's an amazing guy, man. And, uh, you know, backbone of my family for a lot of things. Tell Terrence to bring his ass on up to St. Louis. We're going to tap them boys. What's up? Uh, you sound good. We're going to tap them we boys. Are, we, 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 we. CP3 done smelted it. Ryan hey, we, Felton team done smelted it. I mean. We do. Hey, we, uh, hey, we ain't from North Carolina. So don't be you naming all Carolina teams. Like, like we. Well, listen, do one of those crazy. My okay. team is the only team that went to that Nike Elite in the, in the A. Okay. And we won it. Okay. We ain't One no thing Nike I know team about now. my team, my team always we ain't in no that. Nike team now. We always in that championship. Hey, hey we ain't no Nike team. We now. always in the championship. Hey, hey, hey sound I know, that. I know hey. my team is shit. Hey, you see the trash? Dog. I hear you. Double the little ones. What you think my guys are? <laughs> little mm. dog puppies, boy. Man, <laughs> finesse I'm, king. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, boy. Man. I don't know if you want that smoke. Just wait. Okay. Wait. Wait, we got to set that one. I got a league. I got a league. Brad Bill Elite versus Trez. Raptors. Okay, we don't run from no smoke. boys lace them up, man. We don't run from no smoke. That's good. You can go see my boys after this. They, they'll tell you themselves. We don't run from no smoke. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to figure out. Say less. Say less. <laughs> BBE, I heard that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak. All right, we'll go to Zoom, guys. <laughs> but go ahead, Neil. Hey, Trez, can you take us through uh, the alley-oop that Spencer threw to you and that you finished over a cancer? We have done today? Nice little body. Mm. Hey, uh, nah, honestly, um, I just hit the pick and roll, um, got into it in a quick sprint and didn't really give them time to kind of react, kind of had their indecision kind of in between. Um, like I said, uh, they came with a different game plan than they did in the first game. Um, you know, the first game, they really tried to stay home and try to be in a drop coverage um, with the bigs. But tonight, that was uh, up a lot more and switching. Um, almost down the line and everything, really. So, you know, I really just uh, got into the pick and roll as fast as I could, got behind the defense and, you know, kind of trying to make them, you know, make an indecision on what they wanted to do. And uh, Spence turned the corner, um, you know, with some force, and it, it, he was in a tough situation. It's either I felt like Spence was going to finish on him or, you know, he threw me the lob and I had a chance to. So, I mean, really, it was just one of those quick in plays that we kind of got behind the defense and, you know, won that possession. Thanks, Trez. And Brad, for you, 
how did you see the offense change potentially, you know, late in the fourth quarter into overtimes? It seemed like the ball stuck a little bit more. Was that an adjustment that the Celtics made or how did you see that play out? Uh, we got to be better at that. That's been kind of our Achilles heel. We, uh, we, when teams get to switch and we like to try to go ISO a little bit too much, we got to, we got to stop that. Like we got to keep getting our shooters involved. Like Casey, I told KCP, I said, I did a horrible job of getting you shots tonight. You know, so we got to keep our shooters involved, Davis involved, keep them, give them good looks, send them good screens, um, keep them engaged because they worked their tail off on the other end. So uh, you got to reward everybody, even Kuz, Kuz down the stretch too. So, I mean, just keeping everybody engaged and that, I mean, you know, involved in the game. Uh, but I mean, there's growth in a lot of ways too, because in years past, we wouldn't close out, you know, the way we, we did tonight. Um, so, you know, I've definitely learned a lot over the last few years and understood you know, what what some go-to plays can be for me and for the team and, you know, how we can get good shots out of it, you know. So, like I said before, granted, defense is what propelled us to be able to get good looks on offense again. And, Brad, are you partaking in any of the 101 Dalmatians costumes with your kids? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I missed the memo. I, I didn't get the call this morning, so. No, no Dalmatian for me. No Dalmatian for me. Thanks, Brad. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you're on mute, Bob. Hey, Brad, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Bob. Hey, Brad, how you doing, man? My man. Yeah, from Boston. How are you? I'm doing well. I can see you. Yeah, I see. Okay. Hey, My Trez, man. how you doing? How you doing, brother? Good. I'm glad to, glad to see you. Uh, Glad for your success. Uh, one question you can short answer, give you a, a short list question answer. Brad, in the past, you talked about patience, patience, patience. What was your mindset with all the turnover that went over? And I've, I've, I'm happy for your success. And uh, before, let me just get Trez. Trez, did you, I know you had some tough times over the last couple of years, um, family and stuff. Did you rededicate yourself to the game over the summer with the change that you went through? And thank uh, you, Kid. For sure. Uh, be real with you, man. Um, I mean, I didn't have to rededicate myself to this game, man. Um, I kind of do the same thing all every summer. I kind of don't really change. Um, I go around and play a different turn, uh, different uh, summer leagues, and you know, I stay yeah. working with my trainer, honestly. So um, I didn't have to re motivate myself, um, honestly. Uh, but as far as like the mental aspect, it's something that I'm still dealing with every day because um, I lost somebody that was really special to me and you right. know got me started onto this game, really, man. So honestly, um, every day is a learning mechanism. Every day is a you know a different coping mechanism. Some days I wake up, I'm great, and you know there's nothing yeah. in the world that can really you know bring me down. And some days are a little bit tough. Now. It's just yeah. gonna be the way that it is. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, because you know I'm dealing with somebody who who is uh, my entire world, yeah. you know, and she's not here now, so. Yeah. Um, like I said, every day is a learning process, but I got the, the right support system around me, man. I got, you know, teammates that rally behind me um, when they see me coming in and not really talking much. I got my family that do a great job, and my kids are, you know, the most important thing in the world to me just to see their faces light up when I come in the room, man. So I got the right support system around me. But um, as far as, like, having to rededicate my stuff, nah. I mean, like, I love this game too much. I'm blessed to be able to play it and call it my job. So I'll never take that for granted. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um for me, uh, there has patience has been the word, um, even this year, to an extent. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I want to be patient, but I always say I want to win. You know, I always want to be productive and I want to win here in DC, you know, and we've done that obviously so far. You know, granted, we're only scratching the surface, but throughout this whole process, I had to, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. Like, uh, right. it, was de it was definitely an adverse summer for me as well. Um, on the personal side, but then just basketball wise, like I was with the USA team. So a lot of stuff I was with them, I was trying to deal with wizard stuff too and trying to balance Absolutely. that while Absolutely. also hearing from other players, oh, we want you, we want you to do this, you know? So it was definitely, it was tough, uh, especially when we didn't have a coach, you know? So everything was kind of, okay, what are we doing? It's up in the air. Uh, but, you know, I had a great heart to heart with Shep and, uh, you know, he, he laid it on the line for me and he, he he kept he was honest about the whole process. You know, he was saying it wasn't going to be a quick decision. Uh, yeah. You know, he he was going to take his time. He was going to interview a lot of people, which he did, and he ended up he ended up finding the right agent. He interviewed about, man, he, about <laughs> he 
he had me nervous with that. Yeah, yeah, I, like, I know. Uh, There's a couple people names on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, uh, he eventually, you know, narrowed it down, and I gave him, you know, my quick list of guys, and obviously Wes was on it. You know, two birds and one stone. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely happy for Coach um, and the opportunity that he's given. Um, one Thank you, man. In this, in, this, in this league, and then two, you know, he's been in the part of the league for 20 plus years. He's explained to me, he's been around for 20 plus years, and he's finally getting his first crack at being a head coach. So, you know, I tip my hat off to him for all his hard work and dedication to being part of this game, you know, and creating his own lane um, outside of his dad. So it's very exemplary, uh, but, you know, he's He's been preaching patience, you know, even with our offense, even with him, even with our new team, everything. Everything is going to be patient. Nothing's going to be perfect. Yep. Like I said before, offense is in crap right now. But, yep. you know, we're defending well. <laughs> yep. uh, we're doing it collectively. So just imagine when everything starts clicking, everything's gelling, everybody's healthy. It's going to be scary. Okay.